Hi everyone and welcome to the second episode of our full Steam Ahead series here on Dreamspace Homespace. We're so excited for today's episode and with me we have me. Hi everyone. And in the background, as always, we have the whole Dreamspace team ready to answer any questions that you have. So do pop them in throughout the webinar. If it is about different materials or different things we're, go we're doing here, throw them in there and we'll get to them throughout the episode. Um, also remember that you can put the webinar on pause at any point um, and just put it on pause, go grab some more materials if you need to, um, or go and continue being creative with your build and then you can just press on pause and it'll continue as normal. So today we are extremely lucky um, because we have the amazing Fig O'Reilly with us. Hi so everyone, I hope you're doing well today. I'm really excited to be here. Amazing. So, uh, Fig, we have a few questions um, for you, if that's OK. Absolutely. So, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? So um, tell us who you are, what your role is, where you're from. <laughs> um, sure. So my name is Finula O'Reilly, but everyone calls me Fig. I am from Swords, Dublin, and I am a systems engineer working as a NASA data knot and as the director for NASA's International Space Apps Challenge in Washington, D.C. Um, I'm super excited to talk to you guys today uh, because I, I, I love space and I love science, and I think this is a really, really cool, awesome series that you guys are working on today. Amazing. And last year as well, you were awarded Miss Universe Ireland. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. Um, so last year I, competed, I uh, won the Miss Universe Ireland title, and so I competed at Miss Universe last December. Uh, I do a lot of work uh, advocating for women and diversity in tech, and um, the Miss Universe platform has been absolutely unbelievable uh, to participate in and, and just spend my year doing work on behalf of the advocacy that I do. And so I get to go around, travel around the world, speak to so many different students, just like yourself, yourselves. And um, it's, it's been absolutely fantastic and, and a very rewarding experience. That's amazing. And how did you actually get to be where you are now? Um, do like as in with regards to your job and with Miss Universe. So what did you do to get there? Well, I think my my uh, dive into engineering started when I was about 15 years old. I participated in an after school program, and it was uh, also during the summers of of school. So I, I participated in a engineering technology. Uh, and mathematics science program during my summers and after school and that was when I really got interested in science in STEM in general and so when I applied to university uh, I attended the George Washington University in Washington DC I applied to study systems engineering and so that's what I got my degree in afterwards I started working in data science in the tech industry and that's kind of where I, I got into data science, which is a very specific type of work in technology. And then I started in my role as a NASA data knot, which data knot is a fancy word for data scientist. Oh, okay. And my next question was, did you want to do this when you were a child? But I think you just answered that saying you got involved <laughs> from you were 15, but let's say even younger. Did you always want to be involved with something like this? Well, when I was really young, I wanted to be a paleontologist. I was super into dinosaurs at the time. <laughs> but I also wanted to do loads of things that had nothing to do with science. I wanted to be a ballerina. I wanted to be uh, an FBI agent at one point in time. <laughs> I wanted to be a truck driver. I wanted to be uh, an actress. Um, I've had loads of interests. But I, I did settle on wanting to be an engineer because I thought it was so cool being able to create physical innovation that, you know, uh, contributes to society and help, helps make our world better. Um, I think there's, there's some photographs on the screen just there, and I, I kind of want to explain what some of these are. And um, if you're listening, these are, this is from the coolest mission that I was ever part of. Uh, this was NASA's InSight mission to Mars. So the rocket behind me in the first picture, I'm standing about uh, 50 meters away from it. And that rocket 
uh, in 2018 launched off to Mars. And it was an absolutely fantastic project to be a part of. I got to go on government uh, uh, news in America and talk about it. I got to sit in mission control and press the big red button that would stop <laughs> the <laughs> that would stop the entire mission altogether. Um, I'm standing next to a jet in the, in the left hand side, and uh, down below I'm hanging out with some other scientists and engineers. And um, uh, the bottom right picture, I'm standing in front of. Uh, an airplane that got tricked out with NASA, um, NASA innovation, different uh, robots and equipment that um, we used to uh, do some experiments on aerosols in the atmosphere. So it's been an incredible experience as a NASA data not because sometimes I do get to work, you know, in my office, but sometimes I get to go out into, into the field and see really cool stuff like this. That is absolutely amazing. And I can just imagine myself as a child hearing that, that I had the big red button in front of me. It sounds like <laughs> a lot of people's dreams when they were younger. <laughs> it so, really does look like you would imagine how, <laughs> in how they portray it in the movies, that's exactly how it looks in real life. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Yeah. So I can, I can keep having those dreams then of finally being able to make it there myself. Um, absolutely. <laughs> So um, before we move on, is there is there any fun fact that you'd like to tell us that you haven't already told us? Is there any other fun fact about yourself that you'd like everyone at home to hear? Um, a fun fact. Um, let's see. I have a couple. I have three fun facts. One, I'm one of six girls. I have five sisters and I'm a middle child. Um, the second fact, I played football for 12 years, so I like to think that I'm pretty good um, it, with sports. And uh, the last fun fact is I've lived in and traveled to 20 countries um, with my family and also for work. That is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, is there anything you'd like to promote or where can people find you um, if they want to, um, look up to follow you? Yeah, you, I'm, I'm super active on social media. So if you'd like to know more about me or my journey or the things that I do, um, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm at Fig O'Reilly, F-I-G-O-O'Reilly on Instagram. Okay, amazing. And hopefully you'll stay on the call with us um, and give us some tips and tricks of some of the rest of the things we'll be talking about later. Absolutely. Uh, and if anyone has any questions for me at any point, just please let me know. I'd be happy to answer. Yes, exactly. So do pop those questions into the Q&A section at home and we will get to them at the end of our challenge. So that was amazing. And we heard so much there. And we even, um, Fig even mentioned STEM and her love of STEM. So let's talk about what this series is all about. We did go through this last week with STEAM and the STEAM challenge. But let's just do a quick refresher as to what all of this means. So STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts and maths. And it is extremely important when you combine all of these subjects together in an activity or in something that you're doing, you're developing skills that you wouldn't develop when doing other activities. So it's really important to focus on these. And that is why we're doing this whole series on them. Um, so do keep that in mind throughout the series. So today we are doing our one, two, three blast off um, challenge. So it's very, very exciting. We're working with our theme of science and a theme of space for obvious reasons. Um, and if you look at the pictures there, you can see that there, there's a few different things going on and we're doing something really exciting. We're going to be making our very own rocket OK, on a smaller scale, not as big as the one that we saw in the picture a few minutes ago, but on a smaller scale, we're going to build our own rocket and we're going to do a science experiment to see if we can make it launch off, maybe not into space, but launch off the ground anyway. So it's really, really exciting. I'm going to pass you on to Neve now, who's going to very quickly go through the materials that you will need for this episode. Thanks, Kaylin. OK, so first off, we need to go to the Wakelet and we're going to upload the materials needed for each of our challenges the day before our webinar. So yesterday we posted the materials needed today. So on our Wakelet, we need to go to the full steam ahead section and we need to click on it. And then we need to go down and find the materials for whichever webinar you're participating in. So today will be materials two because it's our second webinar. So you have to click on the PDF for the materials two and that will give you the list of materials you will require for today's webinar. OK, so now I'm going to go through quickly what materials we require. So like I outlined last week, 
we're going to have different sections each week and we're going to require different different materials each week for each challenge. So I have four different sections and we're going to need these today to build our rocket. So these are going to help us build our rocket, these materials. OK, so I would advise that you use one item from each of the sections from the blue, yellow, green and pink section. But as I mentioned last week, if you don't have these items, don't worry. There's no need to have um, all these items. You can just improvise with what you have available to you. And one thing I would mention would be to use as many recyclable materials as possible and try and save the planet while building your rocket. And something else I'd like to enforce is that if you do um, use the scissors, please ask permission from your parents to do so and maybe ask them to supervise or help you while using uh, the scissors. So today we also have a second set of materials that we will require. So the first set was needed to build our rocket, which is obviously very, very important. But the next set is going to help our rocket take off. So it's going to be the experiment side of our um, webinar or our challenge today. OK, so don't worry again if you don't have all of these materials, you can build your rocket and maybe improvise or do the experiment side of the challenge at another stage. But if you do have these materials available to you, I would suggest gathering some of them. So you will need the vinegar. Everyone will need vinegar and then um, one item from the other three sections. So there's a choice of two items from the yellow, green and pink section so you can pick one item from them sections. OK, so today we're learning how to build a rocket that hopefully will take off into the air or blast off into the air. But what exactly is a rocket? Well, a rocket is like a missile or an aircraft or a spacecraft or any other vehicle that obtains trust from a rocket engine. And the word rocket can have a couple of different meanings. OK, some people might think when they hear the word rocket of maybe a tall um, round vehicle. Some people might think of a rocket as something that launches into space and all of those things will be correct. OK, but a rocket can also be a type of engine. And the very first rocket that was able to fly high enough to reach into space was launched from Germany in 1942. So a long, long time ago. OK, and then the very first rocket that launched something, so an object which was the first satellite, was launched in on the 4th of October in 1957. So again, quite a long time ago. However, the first moon landing occurred using the Apollo 11 rocket and Neil Armstrong and his team landed four days after the rocket was launched on the 16th of July 1969. OK, so again, it's really, really interesting to learn all about rockets and hear all the, this, this kind of stuff. And when that Apollo 11 um, rocket reached the moon, um, it landed on the lunar module. OK, so our solar system has eight different planets. It's made up of eight different planets which orbit around our home star, the sun. So there's a couple of cool fun facts about rockets and space and the very first moon landing. But seeing as we have our very own NASA expert here today, I'm going to pass over to Fig. Maybe Fig, um, you might have a couple of other fun facts or details about um, rockets and space and NASA that you'd like to let us know about. Yeah, so I'm so glad that you mentioned an, 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 a very important word, which is thrust. A rocket needs to be thrusted off the ground to go into space. And so we do that with something that is called a propellant. And that is made up of fuel and oxidizer. So I'm sure in the experiment that you guys are doing with your project, you are kind of reenacting what it's like to, to create a propellant using fuel and oxidizer. And also, you mentioned the Apollo 11 rocket that sent us to the moon. Now, we have learned so much about the rockets that take us into outer space. And now, we have realized that the Apollo 11 rocket 
which was so massive and so amazing, was actually so big and way too big for actually sending people to the moon. So we've created rockets that are actually much smaller and uh, not necessarily as big as the Apollo 11. For example, the Apollo 11 is like sending you to school in a helicopter. That's just a lot of work, right? You wouldn't necessarily go to school in a helicopter. You'd just ride your bike, take the bus, or, or have the parent drop you off. So we've learned so much about rockets, and hopefully we're trying to get someone on Mars one day. Yeah, that's amazing. Sounds cool. Um, it's great to have an expert here to explain all of this for us, isn't it, Kaylin? <laughs> yeah, no, it really is, <laughs> especially when uh, we go on to look at the different rockets that have actually launched human beings into space. So when I look at them, because obviously I'm looking at it from the point of view of just looking at the pictures, I haven't seen them in real life. But <laughs> when I look at them, I see that there is a definite shape that they're going with, um, where it's wider at the bottom and it comes to a point at the top. And we can see that, it, yeah, most of them seem to have some sort of um, some sort of thing at the bottom and then it does come to a bit of a point. Um, so let's keep that in mind when we're when we get on with our challenge. Um, so let's go into that right now. So what is our challenge for today? So you have to use all the materials that you have available to plan and construct your very own rocket and prepare for it to jet off into space. So that's why it's called 321 Blast Off, okay? Um, but there are a few things that we need to think of before we get our challenge. Just like if it was a real launch, there'd be a few things that they would have to take into consideration. So I'm sure before a real rocket were to launch, they'd need to think of the amount of fuel um, or the weight. Am I right, Fig? Absolutely. Yeah, so there's a few things that they need to think about. So just like that, we need to think about the same when we're building our rocket. So how can we use this equipment to get the rocket to go as fast as possible? Okay, so here we're going to think about something called aerodynamics, which I know is a word that is new to a lot of people. And it's quite a big word as well. So aerodynamics is when the item that's going through through air basically is a shape that will allow it to move through the air easily without causing any drag or resistance. So for example, if I had my water bottle here, which has a flat bottom, if I were to push that through space, it wouldn't go as fast as something as, let's say, my pen here, because my pen has a pointed tip. So it would be able to almost cut the air as it goes through it. So let's think about that, because that was something we noticed from our the pictures we saw a second ago, our diagrams. So there was a pointed tip. What weights are the materials? OK, so this is something that we did reference last week, that the weights of the materials in all of these challenges are going to be important. So last week we wanted something almost heavy at the bottom to keep it stable, but then we wanted it to get lighter as it went up. And I think we're going to have to use that same thinking today because we want this rocket to actually go into space. And I know that all of these rockets that have brought people to space were very light on their own. OK, and what factors do we need to take into consideration on launch day? OK, so here we need to think about where we're going to do our experiment. Now, this experiment, I would recommend doing it outside. So when we think of outside and outdoors, especially in Ireland, we need to think about if it's raining, if it's windy, and how could that actually affect what is going to happen in our experiment or how fast it's going to go. So we do need to think about that as well. Okay, so pause the webinar now and have a think about those questions before you get started with our build. But for now, let's get started with our challenge. Let's go through the materials that we have for today. I have some cardboard, a bottle, some glue, tape, paints, marker, pencil, scissors, ruler, and then some paper as I always do over here as well. The bottle is going to be the main part of our build today. So let's have a look at the bottle and think about the designs that we saw off the rockets that have carried humans to space. So all of the rockets seem to go up into a point to help them go through the air better and go faster. Makes sense for this to be the top of our rocket because it goes into a point. Okay, 
So if we have our rocket like this, now we need to think about the fuel that we're going to be putting into our rocket. So we're going to be putting the fuel inside here. And when we think to the designs of the rockets that we've seen, the fuel always comes out of the bottom of the rocket. Actually, we're going to have to have a rocket this way. But we don't know if our rocket will stand like that for very long before takeoff. And we don't have the top of our rocket coming to a point. So it might have the air pushing against it to make it so that it won't actually take off that far. Okay, so let's have a look at our materials and see what we can do to our bottle here to make it look a little bit more like a rocket. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get my rocket to stand up like this. Okay, so I need to create some sort of a stilt or a stand for my rocket. So I'm going to take some card and I'm going to draw some designs that I think will work and then stick them onto my rocket. Okay, so now we have the pieces to our stand. The next thing we have to do is to decorate them and look a little bit prettier before we stick them on to the bottle. So for this, I'm going to use some paint. And then you have to wait for your paint to dry. I also went and I printed out some other designs that I wanted to stick onto my rocket. So feel free to do that as well. I'm going to just cut these out and stick them on to my little stand here. Now that all of that is done, the next thing we have to do is to stick these on to our bottle. So we want to make sure that our bottle can use these to stand up. So that means that this flat part is going to have to be on the ground. So I'm going to stick these on, making sure that there is enough room for our bottle to stand onto the ground. And now we have our rocket able to stand up. Okay, so now we have the stand stuck onto our rocket and ready to go. We're able to stand it up and we'd be able to put in our fuel inside and let it take off. But the thing that we're missing from those diagrams that we saw earlier on is the pointed top. So we need to think about how can we create that with the materials we have. I'm going to put my rocket over here I'm going to grab a piece of card and I want a semicircle. So I want half of a circle. And I'm going to draw one of those onto my page here. Now I'm going to cut this out. So I said I wanted half a circle, not a full circle. 
So I'm going to fold this over, make a line so that I know that is where I need to cut and then cut it in half. Next thing I need to do is just fold this into a cone. So I can just do that by folding these two pieces in and sticking it together. Now I just need to stick my cone onto my bottle. And now we have our rocket. Okay, so that's the build of my rocket there. And you can see that I use card to make that stand, but you could just as easy use other materials that you have available at home. So you could also use pencils because pencils would be good and strong to hold all of those, to hold your bottle up. Okay, so just use whatever you have available. So let's see how the experiment actually went. Let's get started on the experiment now. So we have all, our, all of our materials. We have our rocket, we have our vinegar, our baking powder, some kitchen roll and a bottle plug or a cork there as well. So the first thing we have to do is we have to put some vinegar into our bottle. So let's open up our vinegar and put a good bit into our bottle. Okay, so I've put about four tablespoons of vinegar into my bottle. The next step is to put in our baking powder. So how we're going to do this is we're going to wrap our baking powder in some kitchen roll and that will stop the baking powder from reacting with the vinegar until we have it ready. Okay. So we can call this our fuel. So I have one packet here of baking powder or about a tablespoon. I'm going to open it up and put it in my kitchen roll like this. Then I'm going to just Fold it over, fold it over again and seal it up. And then I'm going to twist the two sides just as if it was a sweet. Okay, so now we have our fuel ready. Let's go outside and test out our experiment. Okay, so we have our rocket and all of our materials are ready for takeoff. So we have our bullet ready here and our cork. And with my cork, what I did was I covered it in some tape to make it so that it would fit inside of the bottle. Okay, so you need to do this really, really quickly. So have an adult there or someone there to help you to put your fuel in and then to get your cork on really, really quickly. Okay, so I have my fuel in. I have my cork in place. I'm gonna give it a little shake and get ready for takeoff. Okay, so we can see there that we had our rocket take off and I just want to note the measurements that were used in that experiment. So we had one part powder and two parts vinegar. So I used a bit too much vinegar at the beginning but that's also something really important to note that you might need to try this out a few times before it works and I had to try a good few times before I got this to work and that's okay. And so I used one part powder and two parts vinegar. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what actually happened in this um, experiment. So why did it react in the way that it did and why did it take off? Okay, so what actually happened is, is when that powder, so your baking powder um, or your baking soda, when that got mixed in with the vinegar, they, they reacted together and it started to create carbon dioxide. Okay, so this is the same type of gas that we 
breathe out and that trees breathe in. So it started to creating this gas and you were able to see all of the bubbles bumbling, bubbling up inside off, um, off the rocket. And then when the bottle got so full of air that it couldn't hold any more, the lid popped off and the rocket shot off into the sky. So that was what happened in it. Just a thing to note that I had to, I learned on one of my tries there, is you do need to wait a few minutes. So give it a little shake and wait for the wait for the bubbles to bubble up because sometimes it might take a little bit, especially if you're using a big bottle. Because if you think about it, the bigger the bottle, the more air that needs to be created for the lid to pop off. So that was what happened in our science experiment. And we're so happy that we got our rocket to work and hopefully you can at home. I'm going to pass you over to Neve now, who I think has been keeping an eye on the Q&A section to see if we had any questions um, for Fig. I have indeed, and we've loads of really, really interesting questions. Um, so I hope you're ready, Fig. OK, so the very first one, um, this is one that I personally have. I just was wondering, would you have done anything different in your build of the rocket uh, to make it more aerodynamic, seeing as you have real life proof of what a rocket looks like? <laughs> um, I thought that was absolutely fantastic and I, I was really enjoying watching it. Um, I, I, I think that it was a great first experiment for a rocket. If anything that I would have changed, I probably would have just added um, you know, some more stickers and uh, maybe some <laughs> glitter. <laughs> I thought it Very absolutely good. was a great rocket and just the way it even blasted off at the end. Um, I, I think that was uh, a really, really great, um, you know, I think you, you said, I, I don't want to get the, the mixture wrong, but the parts that you had to the figure and, and the base, I thought that was fantastic because it really shot up. Um, so, so that was really great. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything else though. Very good. Um, I see another question here. What exactly is data science? So could you explain that to us, Fig? Yeah, so data science, it's a type of uh, analysis where you use mathematics and coding to come up with um, recommendations. And what that means is, is that you get to look at large amounts of data I'm a coder. I've been coding since I was 15. You get to look at large amounts of data and you have to be the person that kind of processes large amounts of data and then you create a story, a background that tells you what all of this data means so that you can recommend to someone what the best course of action is. So we use mathematics and the scientific method to make that happen. So we uh, use data visualizations, which is a fancy, fancy term for just saying we can make really awesome, beautiful graphs. So that is the artistic aspect of my job is being able to look at a lot of information and then put it into something that is really visually simple to understand, very beautiful so that you can pass it on to someone else who is going to be making uh, decisions based off of the information that you are able to provide. Thanks a million. And I see we have another question here. Um, who inspired you um, throughout your career? Did any of your parents, um, were they scientists or engineers or coders or who was your biggest role model in life? Um, no, none of my parents or family members uh, work in STEM and uh, but that was okay. Um, I think my biggest role models were just people that I found um, over time, I, I've had some great teachers that have inspired me. I watched a couple really awesome movies that inspired me. I watched a movie called Hidden Figures not too long ago, and it was all about these women at NASA who were actually the very first coders at NASA. They did mathematical analysis that helped put Neil Armstrong on the moon. And so people like that throughout history have inspired me. I've, I've met a couple astronauts myself who have told me that, you know, their journeys um, were quite simple as well. They just had a big dream and they just kept going after it no matter what. So I, I, I think that there have been a few people that have been key in helping me uh, kind of realize this dream of working with NASA. 
But it's important to note there that it doesn't need to be someone linked directly to you or a family member, that a role model can be Absolutely. someone that you don't know and you, you just need to be ambitious and follow your dreams. Isn't that right? Yeah, absolutely. No one, no one in my family works in science or technology at all. My, my, fa my father's in the military. I had a grandfather who was a, a Garda and um, my mother, she works in an office at a, at a school, at a private school. And, and we have, you know, great parents, but... Um, yeah, I was the first one that pursued a, a, a career in, in science and technology. And that's okay too. Sometimes being a pioneer is, is a really exciting thing to do. Exactly. Um, I have another question here for you. What's the Space App Challenge? Oh, the Space App Challenge. That is probably one of the most exciting things that I get to do every year. The International Space Apps Challenge is a global hackathon and a hackathon is essentially a, a place where coders, technologists, even scientists and engineers, people who work in STEM of all sorts of backgrounds come together and participate in different challenges using NASA's data. So we have a lot of data from NASA. So imagine all of the satellites that we have up in up in space uh, and, and the atmosphere. We have uh, uh, loads of satellites that are constantly taking in data and sending it back down to us here on Earth. So sometimes what do we do with that information? We like to get all engineers, all scientists from around the world together. So every year we have about 25,000 uh, people that work in STEM coming together and we have about 25 challenges. All of these challenges are either earth science or space innovation themed. They're real problems that we want uh, our people to help us answer. So one of my favorite challenges to put things in perspective last year was we kind of heard about how uh, uh, intense some of these wildfires are getting all around the world. In Australia, for example, there were massive wildfires that were affecting the, the forests and the rainforests and, and, and the, the environment. So NASA came together and at, for the Space Apps Challenge, we asked our engineers to help create innovation that can uh, stop this issue from happening uh, any further or make sure that it doesn't happen as intensely as it has been. So that's what the Space Apps Challenge is. It's an incubator. It's a way for us all to come together uh, and, and contribute in a big group project. That sounds amazing. What an incredible project to be part of. And I'm going to finish off with one last question and uh, fake I see here in the Q&A section. How did you hear about the job in NASA and do you know now what NASA looks for in their scientists? Absolutely. I think, well, the first part of the question, how did I hear about it? It was actually a friend of mine that I went to uni with. Uh, she had been a part of uh, a NASA program before I had and she told me about it. Now, I used to look at people who worked for NASA I used to think, wow, you must have to be a genius, you know, to be able to work there. And I, you know, I was confident in my skills, but I, I didn't think that it was something that I could do. And so my friend, she told me about this program. We went to together, and she goes, I really think that you should consider applying. Um, I've been a part of the program. I, I kind of know what they're looking for. Uh, uh, you've always been great at this, this, and this. I think you should apply. And I will be honest with you, it took me a year to work up the courage to send in my application, but I'm so glad that I did because I wound up getting to be a part of the program. And so now it's been about two and a half, going on three years that I've been a part of these programs. And now I've realized that uh, the engineering attitude, it's not about who's a genius and who's not. It's about who is a problem solver and who's willing to stick with a challenge and to stick with a problem and not walk away from it. And I think that is what is uh, uh, important about innovation, is being curious enough to not give up. Exactly. And you mentioned a really, really important factor in um, STEAM is problem solving and being innovative. So thanks a million. I think we leave it there. There's lots more questions and unfortunately we can't always get to every single question. But um, I, I'm sure that everyone watching in today will um, be in agreement that you've been a brilliant role model and I'm sure you'll be top of the list for a lot of people after today that's watching in. <laughs> 
So we'll um, go move on to uh, what we've covered today. So in today's webinar, we recapped over what STEAM is. So the S stands for science, the T for technology, E for engineering, A for arts and M for mathematics. We also learned some fun facts about space and rockets. For example, the very first rocket that was able to reach high enough into um, the sky to reach space was launched in 1942 by the Germans and it was called the V2 missile. And we also learned that the first um, moon landing occurred four days after July 16th and 1969, so Neil Armstrong and his crew. We also learned about aerodynamics and obviously aerodynamics is how a vehicle travels through um, the air. We learned how to build a rocket and we've seen um, Kaylin's amazing creation of a rocket. And we also learned what happens when we mix different substances. So obviously they reacted um, with one another and they caused the blast off there today. Um, so now we're going to move on and we're going to assign the home challenge for this week, which is one of my personal favorites. So we want you to create your own very own rocket. And if you have the materials available, we'd like you to try and expect do the experiment. So test it and hopefully it'll blast off just like Kaylin's rocket did into the air. And the last thing we would like you to do is draw a picture of the world that your rocket lands on. So you can get as creative and innovative with your world and what type of maybe animals or creatures or plants um, are on that world. So have great fun completing that. So now I'm going to have a quick look at the other Q&A. So to just see if there's any other questions. <coughs> I see one here, Kaylin. Um, what what uh, does it matter if you don't have all the materials for the experiment? OK, so for the experiment, no, it doesn't matter at all. So you don't even have to conduct the experiment if you don't want to or if you don't have the materials. Um, you could just be really, really creative with it and create your own backdrop of space. So you could draw out your own um, picture of, of what space looks like. You can make it look all dark blues and blacks with stars in the background. And then you just put on a piece of string or a piece of thread to your rocket and have it shooting through your own sky um, if you wanted to. If you're missing something like the cork, if you have everything else, but you're missing the cork or the lid, then all you have to do is yet again, use your imagination, be creative. All you, all that that is needed for is to stop the vinegar from falling out once you turn it upside down. So you could just as easy wrap a piece of paper um, around in a ball and cover it in tape or in duct tape so that it fits into um, the top of the bottle. So just be creative with it. Have some way of putting a stopper in the bottle. If you make one yourself out of materials you have at home, you can do that. Um, but just be creative with it and then test out a few different times to see what works for the shape of your bottle. Excellent. And I have another one here, Kaylin. I have some bigger bottles and some smaller bottles than Kaylin used in her experiment. Do I keep the measurements the same for my experiment? OK, yes. So um, we did say in the material slide that you can have a big bottle or a small bottle. So whatever one you had around um, your house, but I would keep the measurements the same. So I said that you would use one part powder to two parts vinegar. So if you have one tablespoon of powder, you use two vinegar. If you use two pieces of powder, you use four vinegar. But for this experiment, I would keep it with one powder, two vinegar. OK, and th with the smaller bottle, all that means is that it'll take off faster than if you use a bigger bottle. With the bigger bottle, you might need to wait a bit for the air to fill up so much that the lid pops off. OK, thanks, Kaylin. And I've one last question, but it actually is directed at Fig. It's just after coming in, Fig. Um, mm -hmm. I want to be an astronaut when I grow up. Can you give me one piece of advice, please? One piece of advice if you want to be an astronaut, I would say that one, I just think that that is the cool thing. I also want to be an astronaut when I grow up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think a big piece of advice 
advice would just be to uh, to not give up. There are going to be moments where it's going to be hard. It, it could be hard. It could be difficult. You may in, uh, come across a, a difficult challenge, but you can absolutely do it. If I can get here, then I know that any of you can get here. And uh, if I've met people that I know that they've gotten where they are, then I feel that I absolutely can go there as well. So always keep that motivation, and absolutely, you can definitely become an astronaut. I'm super excited to see where the future of space travel and space exploration goes because it's so very possible, and it's becoming actually more and more possible for my generation and your generation and even generations after us. That's very modest now. Um, uh, Big, but uh, thanks so much for being such an inspiring role model to our young people today. Oh, thanks so much for having me. It was brilliant to be on this uh, uh, the, the series with you guys. Um, I hope you guys are all having a very lovely Thursday. And thanks so much again. I really appreciate it. You really have truly been an, a role model to to us anyway. Who, oh, who thank still, you. <laughs> who still want to become I, I so passionate about. <laughs> I, I just get so passionate about the work. I think it really, it's, it's so fantastic. And I, I, if I can, you know, share my passion with you all, then I think that's the best that I, I could have done. I think that that definitely came across today. So thank you <laughs> so, so, so much from the whole Home Space team for being amazing and joining us today. No problem. No problem. Thanks very much. Okay, guys. I'll, I'll uh, hopefully see some of you guys around at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward right. to it. <laughs> okay, um, bye-bye then. I want to say um, a huge thank you as well to Engineers Ireland for supporting us um, throughout this series. So thank you, Engineers Ireland, for everything that you have provided for us for this series. Um, do remember, everyone at home, that you can find the webinar and previous webinars and everything on aka.ms forward slash home space files. And keep an eye on that link and in our section in there for today's series to see what materials you'll need for next week and what different challenges we'll have for next week. So thank you so much for joining um, and see you all next week. Bye.